Hi, I'm Megan. I'm the office manager here. And I've never put on a trade before. So Megan, we're going to talk about implied volatility, but before we get into implied volatility, we have to understand what volatility is. And volatility is just a fluctuation between a stock price. So if a stock price goes up and down, that's just volatility, right? Price movement. Okay. Simple. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. So it's easy. So implied volatility, I, I like to think of it as like expected volatility. So we're trying to kind of see okay. the future for the expected volatility of price swings. So like predictions, like you're making a prediction of what the volatility is going to look like. Exactly. Okay. Like if it's going to be extreme okay. volatility, if it's going to be minimal volatility, that's what we're looking for. Now that we know what volatility is, just fluctuation in prices, we're going to talk about implied volatility. Mm -hmm. And implied volatility, like we just mentioned, kind of helps us predict the future volatility. And mm -hmm. one way vol implied volatility is represented is as a percentage. So. For example, the implied volatility might be, let's say for the next year, 20%. You know, that doesn't really tell you much right now, but this is how yeah. you kind of calculate it. So let's say we have a stock price, $100. The okay. implied volatility is 20%. That means mm -hmm. over the course of the next year, let's say, 20% of $100 is $20. So mm -hmm. simple math so far, right? Yeah. So that means over the next year, this stock price can move up $20 or down $20. And that's pretty much it. Does that, does that make sense? Actually, I'm a little surprised. It's, it seems a little more simple than I thought it was going to be. So yeah. just the implied volatility is either, it's not just one direction. It's either or. Is that it's my plus correct? or minus. It's plus, plus or, minus. or minus. Okay. Okay. Right. So implied volatility mm -hmm. is one of the most interesting topics that we talk about because it has to deal with the unknown. When we talk about implied volatility being high or low, that really depends on the projection of where the stock price could be. So when we think about implied volatility in real terms, like mm -hmm. real life, I think one of the easiest way to describe it is through like a mood, your, your oh. mood. Okay. So let's say you are having a great day. Maybe you even have the day off. Okay. That might be nice. All right, yeah. Nothing's bothering you. Mm -hmm. I would say that you're going to have a low implied volatility in terms of where your mood's going to be. It's, okay, it's, it's going to be even. It's going to be even. pretty even. Now, let's think about the opposite. Let's say you're having a, you know, a rough day. Maybe mm -hmm. Tom's being a little difficult. Didn't like lunch. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, Something. sometimes that happens. You know. So now, all of a sudden, there's these variables that could affect you. Mm -hmm. If I'm watching this happen mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm seeing, you know, a little frustration, mm -hmm. maybe some, some happiness mixed in here and there, yeah. the implied volatility of your mood is going to be a little bit larger, yeah. Yeah. right? Like okay. You might, you might a have bigger some, swings. Yeah, you okay. might have some down some down moments. You might have some up moments. Okay. It's it's a little more of a higher implied volatility environment yeah. than if you had the day off where nothing's going to bother you. You kind of had this flat baseline happiness. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying high volatility and low volatility. Mm -hmm. I'm, I want to make sure that is correlating to percentages, right? So your low volatility, you'll have a low percentage and mm -hmm. high is high. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is a living, breathing thing. Yeah. But it's very predictable in mm -hmm. the sense that if implied volatility is high, it's not going to stay high forever. Yeah. It typically contracts and, and comes evens back. out. Exactly. Okay. Um, just like our moods when, yeah. you know. Once you get that day off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. Generally speaking, mm -hmm. which company would you assume is more consistent and reliable and dependable? Would you say Pepsi is more reliable, consistent, dependable, or Amazon? My guess would be Pepsi, just because I feel like I hear more of like ups and downs from Amazon. That's exactly correct, right? Like Pepsi's, yeah. they've been making the same products for 19 decades, and they're going to keep churning out the same stuff to the consumers mm -hmm. that love that stuff. So when now you think about a company like Pepsi that's a lot more stable, think about a company like Amazon that's maybe less stable, which company would you expect to have the higher implied volatility? who higher implied volatility would be Amazon, right? Correct. That's have... exactly correct. Okay. And that's exactly what you would find. If you hop in the implied volatility, you will see that uh, Amazon has a greater implied volatility than Pepsi because the nature of the business is a lot more volatile. It moves around a lot more. There's more ups and downs, as you said, that is 100% okay. correct. What did you study in college? What did you graduate with? Zoology degree. A zoology degree. Wow, that's yeah. unbelievable. So did you do... That's so cool. So did you do any like statistical analysis or anything like that? A small amount, yes. Implied volatility and standard deviation. Remember that okay. thing that you guys learned in Stats 101 when you were like, yeah. why am I studying this? I'm never gonna need to know this. But here you go, yep, you yep. need to know this. It's basically the same thing. <laughs>
It's just trying to show you the fluctuations and the expected deviations of the stock. Now, again, we don't know which way it might go, but it's giving us some indication of the volatility in the stock. Basically, you're saying that implied volatility is the standard deviation of the stock price over the years. That is that. But just keeping it simple, mm -hmm. keeping it very basic. Yeah, that's a very, very great starting point. So you've used a baking scale before to like weigh flour. Yes, stuff. all the time. All the time, I bet. The scale gives you like a measurement, right? Yes. But there's a little bit of error on that mm -hmm. measurement. So like your scale might tell you that you have a pound of flour, but you might have a little bit more or a little bit less flour. Your measurement is actually somewhere within a range of values and your uncertainty tells you what that most likely range actually is. Okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. So stocks can kind Kind of be analyzed in a similar way all right okay. a bunch of stuff can yeah so like maybe i look at the stock and on average it returns about one percent per day historically mm -hmm. yeah so this means that every day it increases by about one percent mm -hmm. at least from what i measure from past data but there's a little bit of error or sometimes a lot of bit of error on that measurement too the more volatile the returns of a stock are Mm -hmm. the more uncertainty there is around that measurement. The bigger that uncertainty actually is, the riskier the stock actually is. So this is kind of like if I had two baking scales and one had a way higher error than the other, I'd okay. be a lot more, right? Makes yeah, sense? that makes sense, okay. I'd be much more likely to trust the more the accurate, accurate scale because yeah. it's more reliable. Definitely. Right? It's the same with stock returns. The more mm -hmm. volatile that stock is, the more uncertainty it has, the riskier it is. Okay. So that risk, that we measure with those past returns, that mm -hmm. standard deviation yeah. is what we call historical volatility. And you've learned about standard deviation, right? It's just kind of that yes. range of that values. range plus or minus exactly. that it can move within. Exactly, it's okay. exactly the same as kind of like an uncertainty on a baking scale, we just measure it differently. Mm -hmm. So your standard deviation is similar to your uncertainty or those are two different things? They mean the same thing. They mean the same thing. Okay, Pretty great, much. perfect. That, that, that makes context, a lot of sense, yeah. yes. But it's your historical uncertainty which we call historical volatility because it's what we've yeah. measured in the past and we can kind of make that expectation for the future. Okay. But we know that there's a lot of variability in stock prices and they change a lot. So, you know, it's just a, an estimate basically on what to expect. Right. Okay. Make sense? That makes sense. Yes. It's way messier than measuring with the scale. It's way more <laughs> dynamic, but that's kind of what we use as an approximation for like for risk. Okay. Right? So yeah, that's historical volatility. Perfect. But in the options world, we also have this thing called implied volatility. Options are kind of like financial insurance, if that makes sense. Okay. So traders, if they worry that maybe like an under, like a stock price is going to drop a lot mm -hmm. or increase a lot or whatever they're worried about, they can kind of use options to protect themselves against these moves. Okay. So they're yeah. kind of instruments that kind of act like financial insurance. And when mm -hmm. an, an investor anticipates volatility or they're worried about it, they can kind of buy these to protect themselves or maybe to capitalize on those moves. Interesting. I did not know that options were... They're basically, yeah. we can kind of treat them that way. They're kind okay. of priced in a similar way. The more perceived risk there is, the higher those prices are going to be, just like hurricane right. insurance. Okay, Does okay, that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. So we can use an options pricing model, like the Black-Scholes model is a very common one, to sort of estimate what the fair price of an option should be theoretically. And you know, the riskier the asset is, the more investors are willing to pay for this insurance because they you know, really want that protection. Yeah. And the richer the option prices actually are. And so when we're using our option pricing model, a lot mm -hmm. of the times we'll use historical volatility as an estimate for that risk. But sometimes the price of an option is actually trading at a different value than what we theoretically estimate. Okay. Right? Yes. So we theoretically estimate maybe an option should be trading at $1, mm -hmm. but it's actually trading at $1.25. Okay. Right? So we're saying like, okay, so I estimated the risk with this historical volatility. I put in these parameters of my stock. It should be trading at a dollar based on my models, mm -hmm. but the market is actually pricing it differently. Okay. Right? It's pricing it higher. Yeah. Okay. So they're paying more for those options than, than they should. Than they should be theoretically based on the historical performance of the stock. Investors are perceiving more risk in the assets price than what we actually measure with historical volatility. Okay. That perceived volatility is implied volatility. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That, that makes make sense. sense. Yes, it does. So your implied volatility is not necessarily what you've done your calculations are right. for and everything. It's this perceived um, value from the actual market and not exactly okay because the yeah. op like the options they're their own market. The market yeah. can price things differently than what we theoretically expect, mm -hmm. and the implied volatility 
is basically like we take our prices of our options, mm -hmm. we put it back into our options pricing model, mm -hmm. and we say, okay, what value of volatility should this asset have in order to get this price? Yeah. And sometimes that perceived volatility is higher than higher. what we've actually measured. Mm -hmm. So when we're actually trading, implied volatility is super useful because the more perceived volatility there is, mm -hmm. just like you know with hurricane insurance, if there's a higher perceived risk of hurricanes happening, mm -hmm. then the option or the insurance prices are going to be a lot higher. higher. Right? Okay, yeah. So if we're trying to sell options, we can make a lot more money when the prices uh, are okay, higher. So you can get better returns. So you can get better returns. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. There's a, a zillion reasons why selling in high IVs has worked better in the past compared to low volatility. Mm -hmm. But when those premiums are richer or when those prices are higher, yeah. you can make a lot more money. Your profit potential is higher. Okay. It's really important as a metric because it tells us when opportune times are to sell premium, which is what we do a lot of here, mm -hmm. but also where the market is kind of forecasting prices are going to wind up. Both okay. of those are really useful tools for active trading. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay. Awesome. No, okay. okay. I understand trading now. This is great. This Early is implied volatility. It's implied great. volatility. The most important bit about options trading yes. is implied volatility. So you, awesome. if you can do that, you can do that. Okay. All right. Next expert trader here. There you go. <laughs>